So in this lecture, I want to introduce the idea of loops. And loops are really central to a lot of programming because as I mentioned in, in the introduction, all computers are dumb, but they don't get tired. And so the idea that you could ask them to do something over and over and over and over and over and over again is really central uh, to the idea of, of leveraging the fact that computers can just keep doing calculations. They don't get tired, they don't get bored. Um, but you wouldn't want to write out you know, just, you know, in, in, you know, a script, just millions and millions of calculations, uh, you know, that would take forever. Instead, what we often do is we rely on uh, this idea of looping, of asking computers to do something uh, in a loop uh, where we need to figure out how to break down a problem so that every time it goes through the loop, it's doing a slightly different calculation. It's, you know, updating, you know, the next row of data or the next element in a matrix or, having a calculation that builds on itself. Um, so, you know, we're gonna perform the same operation repeatedly, but hopefully with slightly different inputs. Otherwise, you know, why bother? It would just be the same answer every time. So here's a simple example of a loop. Okay, so first let's go through some syntax. Uh, this bit here is coming before a loop. And this is just me showing how to make a vector in R. So here I'm using this, this function C and with parentheses, this called concatenate. And this is a, one of the easy ways to define a vector in R. And so X now points to this vector of numbers. There's one, two, three, four numbers in this vector. Uh, so X square bracket one would point to 1.6, X square bracket two would point to 2.2. Square bracket three would point to 3.9, square bracket four would point to 4.25, and square bracket five would give you an error because there's only four things in the list. So you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, by contrast, Y and Z are simple scalars, so they're only just pointing to one thing. So let's say I want to have some ma mathematical operation I want to do, and I want to do it for each uh, element in this vector X. So I'm gonna write up a loop uh, that's gonna go through and do this calculation, uh, you know, first for the first X, and second time it goes through the loop, it'll do it for the second X, and sec third time it goes through the loop, it'll use the third X, and the fourth time it goes through the loop, it'll use the fourth X. Okay, so we do this using the function four, and, and very much like we saw in if, you know, four is a function, so it has parentheses after it, and then it again has, these curly braces that tell us what's inside the, in this case, what's inside the loop. So it, it runs this chunk of code with inside the curly braces uh, repeatedly. Uh, within a for, within the parentheses, some key syntax. Uh, so first I wanted to note that this, this notation here, one colon four, is another way of making a vector in R. In this case, it, it makes a vector that's a simple sequence. It's just the numbers one, two, three, four. So there's some bit of memory that now has the numbers one, two, three, four in it. <clears throat> and again, four is what we're using to repeat this calculation of whatever's in the curly braces in order for each val value of i. So i here is another variable. And what's neat about a for loop is I doesn't point to the vector uh, of this number is one, two, three, four. I takes on the, that value in order. So the first time you go through the loop, I takes on the first value in this vector, which is one. And the second time you take on the loop, I points to the second value in this vector, which is two. And the third time we go through this loop, I takes on the value of the, the third value in this vector, which is three. And the fourth time we go through the loop, I takes on the fourth value in this vector, which in this case is four. Using uh, this syntax where you I in uh, a vector that's just a sequence is, is a very common thing to do because that sequence allows us to essentially use I as a counter. Um, it, you can set i to point, let me, you, could, you could have set up this with, you know, with x in this vector and it would have gone through the values of x, but this, this idea of using uh, 
counters is, is very common within loops. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use that counter i uh, to reference things within those square brackets that allow us to look things up. So if we come down into the loop itself, we see what we're doing first is we're saying, you know, x square bracket i. So I'm looking up that ith value within x, and I'm subtracting that from y. And now I'm doing that exact same operation again. So I'm essentially doing x minus y squared. But I'm doing it first. The first time I do this, I do it for the first value of x. The second time I do it for the second value of x, and so on and so forth. And now I'm doing that, and I need some place to store that. And so I'm going to store that in this variable r. And since I'm doing this four times, I want to store it in a vector as well. So I'm, r is, is a vector. Uh, and so the first time I go through this, i equals 1. And so r1 points to x1 minus y squared. Then I'm going to take z and have it point to z plus r. And this is a, a, another neat trick you can do in code, which is I can, I'm going to keep redefining z every time I go through this loop. Uh, so I'm going to keep updating z. And so uh, you're allowed to do this again, because what r is going to be doing is it's going to be doing this calculation of whatever's on the right-hand side of, of this assignment. And then once it's done that calculation, it will then assign that to z. So it's going to essentially take a number out of whatever's stored in z, add it to you know, the, the value of r that we're currently working with, and then stick the result back into z. So you're going to pop it out of z, do some calculation with it, and stick an updated number back in z. So if we look at how this would work, the first time we go through this loop, i is going to point to 1. Z starts out as 0, because uh, that's what we define it. And R is going to be the result of doing you know, 1.6 minus 2.375 squared, which is approximately 0.6. Um, and so I'm going to then take that 0.6, add it to 0, and now update Z to now be 0.6 as well. The second time I go through this, I'm going to do uh, 2.2 minus 2.375 squared, which gives me uh, 0 0.03. And I'm going to then say, you know, z is 0.6, r2 is 0 0.03. I'm going to add those together and stick the sum of them back into z. And then I'm going to repeat this again uh, for the next value uh, in x when i equals 3. I'm going to repeat this again when i equals 4 for the fourth value in x. And so uh, what I'm ending up doing here is I'm doing, you know, r is uh, the square difference between x and y, and z is now summing up over all of those r's. So uh, z is now the sum of square differences uh, between x and y, uh, which is a calculation that we're going to see a lot of when we get to the statistical part of this class, because that's, you know, a a, you know, something we could use, for example, to calculate a sum of squared errors. So if, if I have some data uh, y, as I have some data x, and I have a model that's predicting y, I can calculate the sum of the square differences between that model and the data. Cool. And we'll see a bunch of bunch more examples of functions as we go through the course. So if it doesn't make sense the first time, you can rewatch this video, or you, you'll see a lot of examples of this. Uh, particularly as we dive farther and farther into the class. You might not see it the first couple of weeks, but we'll see it later and you might come back to this.